Louie Abdesco and Don Murray. You guys look like Orioles to me. They're going to introduce our next inductee, Mr. Craig Parker. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Hall of Fame. I want to uh, say congratulations to all the inductees. And uh, most of all, I want to say is that congratulations to Mr. Parker, because the Oreos, is, this is his first, our first inductee to the Hall of Fame in 26 years. But furthermore, to uh, give you more info on Mr. Parker, Mr. Don Murray's got a few words to say. Thanks, Louie. Uh, this is a special night for Craig, but it's also a special night for both of us in that we get to introduce someone that's been our friend for 25 years, and like Louie just said, the first Oriole to go into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Craig's had a pretty lengthy career. This is now his 30th year, I believe, with the last 22 with the Orioles, and he's had an opportunity to play in five championship teams, so we're very happy to have had him along for the ride. When I was preparing for tonight, I was wondering how do I best describe Craig? And I've been away from the game now for about five years, and I really had to think back a little bit. And as I recollected my, my time with him as a teammate, there's one thing that really stuck out in my mind, and that was his love of the game. And I'd, I'd forgotten just how engaged and uh, how dedicated he was to our team over the years. Uh, I know as I, I managed quite a few years, and he was uh, a valuable assistance to me, helping to manage the team. I can recall quite a few conversations during the week before games and immediately after the games, just uh, assessing our performance and what we could do to get better. And I have to say, I really, I really miss those conversations. Uh, we still talk, but now it's usually about his aches and pains. But. Uh, one thing about Craig, as I, as I thought about this, is, was his generosity of time. Um, I'm sure he probably didn't pay much attention to it, but like I said, he was valuable since to me managing. Uh, it was a lot of little things he did for the team that just to kept th keep things going. And I know he didn't care for the title, but he became our equipment manager over the years. And I, I'd have to tell you, he kept us well supplied in uniforms and hats. We, all, we always looked good. We may not have played good, but we always looked good. So we always appreciated that. Uh, I know it probably wouldn't a big deal to, to Craig, but uh, all those little things you did for the Orioles over the years, uh, they were not overlooked and always appreciated. So. On the field, Craig was a tough competitor and a talented player. And at the plate, we always saw him as a solid hitter, rarely struck out, and he, we came to count on him to come through in clutch, clutch uh, situations. And he was always among the team leaders in average and RBIs. And when he wasn't hitting, he was pitching, and he was quite, quite good at pitching. He was a stellar performance, year in and year out. Uh, the one thing about Craig is he had incredible control and it was commonplace for him to leave a game or complete a game with no walks or maybe even one. Two was al almost unheard of. It just had tremendous control as a pitcher. The other thing that we, we appreciated as an infield is that he kept a good pace, wasn't deliberate, kept us on our toes, and made us play defense. But playing behind Craig was not without risk. We learned very quickly that if you made an error, you did not escape unscathed. You would be subjected to what we referred to as the Parker scowl, and it was not a pretty thing. You can imagine yourself being isolated with his eyes and all the rest of your teammates are turning and walking in a different direction. I had to recall one former teammate, he made the comment he had only played with us, I think, two or three games. He'd made an error and got the stare down. And he came back and says, Jesus, he says, that was like looking into the face of the Medusa. So, Craig, you've had a, a very successful career, many fine performances at the plate and on the mound. But I remember a lot of fine pitching performances whereby you walked off the mound with a loss. And inevitably, someone would come up and utter what, in our, you know, part of our time as Orioles became, I think, a catchphrase is Craig, you, you pitch great, but you deserved a better fate. Well, I think tonight your better fate arrived. 
this is quite an honor for you, and we're all happy for you as, as former Oriole players. So, Craig, please come up. Is this on? Everybody can hear me? My wife just asked a few minutes ago, how long is your speech? I said, it's short. Perfect. Anyway, I'll keep this short. I want to thank Don and Louie. You two are the greatest teammates and friends a guy could have. Um, I appreciate the honor of being on the field with both of them all these years. Um, it's just wonderful. When Jim Tigret called me last year and congratulated me on being elected to the Hall of Fame, I was speechless. Um, my first words out of his mouth were, did you run out of guys to pick? Um, I then asked, what about Greg Thompson? I said, I think he's been my left-handed savior more times than I can remember. Every time I was uh, getting tired or needed to get off the mound quickly, Greg came in and put the fire out, and I appreciate that. So thank you. And thank you to the committee for choosing me, and congratulations to all the other inductees. Um, it's great to be in that group with you. I wish mom and dad were alive to see this because they always wanted a ball player. And uh, hopefully I stayed around long enough for them to think I did that. Uh, I want to say thanks to my two sons, Brad and Matt. Um, one of them's in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. The other one's up in Seattle. They couldn't be here. Um, but they sacrificed a lot for me because they knew dad loved baseball. And I know there was a lot of fishing and camping and trips we could have went on, but instead, Dad was playing baseball, and they loved that. And I appreciate them giving up those special moments for me. I also want to thank all the teammates that I've had the pleasure of playing with. Without them giving me all their offense and defense, I wouldn't be up here now. Um, their constant encouragement, enduring my scowls, when uh, an error might be made, my frustration for not making a good pitch, and for fighting back so many times when I was behind, they'd come back and get us a win. And I really appreciate that. I want to thank Johnny Mason for uh, tracking down a lot of balls that should have been doubles or triples, but he, somehow he snagged them. I want to thank uh, Danny Poole over at third base because uh, there were a lot of balls hit down there that should have undressed him, but somehow he fielded them for me and got guys out. And I want to thank Don and Louie for being so solid up the middle for so many years. And to Mark Wright, I want to thank him for all of his assistance behind the dish. I want to thank Rick Ramirez, Dave Poling, Jesse Zachary, Toby, for providing so much offensive support. And finally, to Greg Thompson again. Um, he's our version of Dave McNally. Now, I know he's a Dodger fan. He'd prefer I say Sandy Koufax, but I'm sorry. <laughs> McNally was a very solid left-handed pitcher, and you remind me a lot of him. Um, I want to say a special thanks to the umpires for doing a very tough and thankless job. When I think about the 3,800 innings I've pitched, I got out my calculator and figured I had to throw about 57,000 pitches. And as Earl Weaver once said, with the exception of those 91 or 92 times that they might have missed it, they did a pretty good job. Um, I can't tell you um, how many times one of them had come up to me before a game and say, are you pitching tonight? And I'd say, yes, I am. And they go, that's great. It's going to be a quick game. Well, I'm not sure if they meant I was going to get shelled or if I was a strike thrower. I never could figure that out. But either way, I really want to thank the men and women in blue for their help out here on the field. I want to tell all the baseball players in the MSBL how very wonderful it's been to be on the field with all of you. I appreciate your talents, your love for the game, your devotion to America's favorite top pastime and your dedication to your teams. We're not major leaguers, that's true. But in a lot of ways, we're better. We don't get paid to play. We pay to play. We do it because we love the game. We love the camaraderie and competition. And we keep those boyhood sandlot dreams alive in our hearts. I do want to mention, however, there's a whole lot of you out there 
that already are in the Memphis BL Hall of Fame that got a whole heck of a lot of hits off of me. And as I told Mark Weathers after I got on first base this year, I said, I've never gotten a Christmas card from any of it. And I think that's kind of cruel. And the other thing I want to mention is that when I would strike a guy out and they'd walk back to the dugout, they'd go watch out for his changeup. That hurt too because it was my fastball that I threw. Um, I'm not kidding about that either. It hurt. Last but not least, by any means, Sharon, I want you to stand up, please. I want to thank my wife, Sharon, for uh, hanging in there with me all these years. Um, I want you to know that today is our 45th wedding anniversary. Um, it's also a class reunion for her up there in Jackson. We didn't, didn't get, get to, to go to. to. We were also invited to something up in the wine country at El, uh, a really fancy Farniente, and they all landed on the 17th of September. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, but from the time we first started dating in in, uh, in my senior year of high school, um, she knew how much I loved this game of baseball. She watched me play high school, college during the summers, and. Uh, I wanted to see Memorial Stadium before the Orioles moved to Camden Yards, so we went there to watch a game, and while I was sitting there, she said, you know, you ought to play in that fantasy camp for the Orioles, and I said, no, I don't want to do that. Well, she talked me into doing that. What it led to was me going down to Sarasota for six more years after that. I got to meet Earl Weaver. I got to pitch against Brooks Robinson, Paul Blair, Don Buford, Richie Dower. I got a base hit off Jim Palmer. Uh, I hit a home run off Dick Bosman. Um, and it was just fantastic. But when I got back home from there, that's when the Men's Senior Baseball League started to be around. And she said, you ought to play that. So Sharon, thank you for giving up so much time so I could play this game. I've enjoyed playing in the Men's Senior Baseball League so much over the past 30 years that I never really realized I was getting older. But this summer, for the first time, my shoulder is telling me something's wrong. So I haven't been able to throw and help my team out much this summer, and I apologize to the guys for that. Um, hopefully, I, you know, the cortisone shots will help. Who knows? But either way, I've tried my best, uh, gave it my all, and thank you so much for the men's senior baseball league existing. Thank you for letting me play against such a great group of talented people. And thank you for electing me to the Hall of Fame.